Hey everyone, it's Father Alexander Har. And it is Father David Marshall. And this is A Bridge Between, where we uh, bridge our knowledge of the Gospel. We uh, bridge between two priests who are in different locations. And uh, this week we're continuing to build a bridge between Easter and the season that comes after Easter. And us in the Gospel. And I would also like to point out there's a bridge between us, but we're also friends, folks. Even though Alex and I might actually start disagreeing today. <laughs> so we, we, so folks, we do this thing where we, we talk about what we're going to talk about, and then we get it ready, and then he hits record. We kind of, we launched into it today, and we're like, we should just record right now. So uh, this is the unplugged version of, uh, of Alex and Dave. So um, let's see what happens. So today we've got a wonderful gospel. Actually, one of the reasons I love this gospel is... I preach on it, unfortunately, all the time, because it's John 14, 1 through 6, included in that, um, and that's one of the readings that we get uh, a lot of uh, selections for, for funerals. Yes. Um, and so um, I really had to reflect a lot on this particular passage over the last uh, several years of being a priest, because people would select this a lot um, for their funerals or for their family members. and. Um, I really had to think a lot about it and, and dive into it deeply um, you know, from a lot of different angles. Did you have a lot of funerals because of, um, of people passing away because of COVID? Um, no, I mean, actually, I think it's just the reality of an aging church. Okay. Um, okay. Also, when I was a, a curate at another parish, it was a larger church. Um, so I did a lot more funerals because it was just a larger congregation. Right, right. Yeah, I have one coming up Saturday and we're using this one. So yeah, um, it holds a special, um, a special spot in the hearts of priests and pastors, uh, especially liturgical ones who use this. Um, and it's an uneven road. It's, um, we hold it, we, but if you, if you folks heard, Alex began with an adverb, unfortunately, um, that it's, I, I like the passage. It's one that I, I read a lot. Unfortunately, I reflect on it. It's, it's, so there's always this balance back and forth with us. And for those that often wonder, what's it like to do what we do? Um, this is part of it. So, yeah. you know. It's a test. It's very hard. It is. It is. Well, shall we jump in? Yeah. All right. So our gospel lesson this Sunday is John 14, 1 through 14. I like repeating numbers. It's easy for those who like to memorize scripture. Uh, however, we are going to read, we're spending most of our time today in just the first paragraph. And it starts this way. Jesus said, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way. To the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Heavy stuff. Oh. Heavy stuff. And Thomas. So Thomas isn't just somebody that we say he doubts and we talk about him on the second Sunday of Easter. Thomas is here too. We don't know where you're going, Lord. How can we know the way? Yeah, So because sometimes Jesus can appear to be kind of uh, cryptic in a way, in the way he's talking. But he'll also tell you, why don't you understand? I'm just speaking to you plainly. I'm speaking to you plainly. Right. <laughs> Yes, I'm trying to explain the best way I can. So, yeah, like this past Sunday, uh, which we didn't cover on this podcast, about Jesus talking about the shepherd and the sheep, and they're like, what? Okay, I'm the gate, all right? I'm the gate. I open, people come in, they go to pastor, you know, that it's it's one of those. And so uh, that's the Johannine Jesus, if you will. This is the Jesus we find in John. So, uh, Alex, we started our warm-up by you asking me, what does this mean? Jesus saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And I give you a, a personal answer. I gave you the one that says, he is 
my way, he's the truth, my life. That uh, I cannot get to God. I can't get to God through various precepts or the right way of living. I can't do it on my own righteousness. There's no way uh, that, uh, that I need Jesus. I depend on him to bring me to the Father for him in his life, uh, in his words, his actions, all of those things to represent who God is and then inviting me to follow along the way. And the way for me is that Jesus is my, my future, he's my present, and he's my past. It's a path that he's been with me, he is with me, he will be with me. And then um, the Jesus is uh, the way, the truth, and the life. Uh, that he is showing us the right way of living, abundant life. Uh, forgiving, being forgiven, uh, giving and receiving, all of those wonderful things. That that's, to me, that's what it means. And it was very personal. And then you said, nothing? Okay. Yeah, you just, I think you just froze there for a second. But, um, oh, nice. Um, so I, I would say, though, that the answer that you give is beautiful. Um, and it's very similar to an answer that I would give is that when I think of Jesus as the way, the truth, and the life, I, I think of what each of those words mean. So for me, when I think of the way, it is the path, it is... Um, the person through whom I go to to, to get to God. Um, mm -hmm. Where am I walking? Human beings, we're, we're going in a direction which is forward, hopefully, because um, that's how we are, we're linear people. Um, mm -hmm. So you have the way, and then the truth is, I think, where it really kind of starts to get difficult, because as a human being, I like to have my own truth. I like to uh, kind of prescribe my own truth, and it's not always gonna be in perfect harmony with what God says is the truth. All right. And when I think of the life, I think of not just what it means to be alive as breathing, but also what Jesus meant by eternal life, um, that all life comes through him. You know, he is the word. You know, when we talk about through all creation, all things that were done through him. Um, mm -hmm. I think where, where you and I are going to have an interesting discussion today is um, should this be something that we discuss in the context of evangelism, especially when we live in a multi-religious and multi-faith society? Um, I think where you and I kind of started to get really interesting is I was asking, should we? Like, Is there a should we do this? And I think you were focusing a little bit more on the how. Or and the why. Two separate things. And the why. And I think those are right. two separate things. So, So why don't we just kind of pick one, which is, the why, like why should we as Christians be talking to other people and telling them about Jesus with the purpose of saying, you should follow Jesus? Okay, but when, when you say why should, you're already making an assumption. Um, so just why, why share it? Why, why share it, yeah, why share it? Right, so we'll take the should out if you don't mind. No, no, no. Uh, for just a moment. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's our new t-shirt, take the should out. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Why share it? So if this is a highly personal, as I had described, if a highly personal thing, Jesus, this is, brings me to God. I mean, this is my only intersection in, uh, I mean, I love nature, I love swimming, all that, but Jesus really is the one that connects me to God. Um, then, then why, then why share it? Um, you have an answer for that? Well, I think, I think I have a little bit of an idea. Um, first of all, when I think of the why, and I think of the idea of it being something personal, it wasn't just told to me. It was, it was told to the world as best it could be told at that time. And when Jesus says this to his followers, he is not saying this in the context of keeping it a secret. I mean, he would tell people sometimes, don't say anything about this oh, until I'm risen and all this other stuff. Right. This is something that he specifically said, I want you to share the good news. Mm -hmm. and, and I think when we come down to what the good news is about, I like to think of it as, as this. The good news is, is that I can't do it myself. Right. I don't have to do it myself. I don't have to be the king who sits on the throne and rules the world. Um, I cannot save myself from my own sin. And so when I begin to think about that, that's really good news. I'm not just going to disappear. You know, there is something that happens and I want that eternal life. Um, the, the other part of that is the why is in, I think, ingrained with the person who shared it. 
when Jesus shares it, mm-hmm. Jesus demonstrates that God is personal. Right. And sharing this truth about Jesus cannot be separated from sharing Jesus himself. You know, it's the same way, not, not exactly the same way, but it's a similar way that when I talk to my mom or my wife or people around the parish, I share about you. I share about the conversations we have, the projects Mm -hmm. that we're working on, you know, all the different jokes that that we tell. But they know that I'm not just sharing about, Father Dave said this funny thing. I'm trying to share you. And so when you meet my mom one day and she gives you a hug, you'll know why. (laughs) Right. Right. I think to, to me, the why is a sense of urgency that comes from loving other people so much that we want them to share and receive not just like what we have, but what Jesus provides. So there's a, um, a really good Mexican restaurant near us that mm-hmm. I don't want to tell people about because it, they're busy as it is. Right. right. You know, and, and if I start posting on Facebook and all that type of stuff, if I start telling my parishioners, they're just really good, it's going to become overrun. Right. And so it is a really, um, self-serving thing for me to not share this particular restaurant. Um, Christy and I talked about it and we decided that we, we actually need to share it. We need to tell people. So if anybody is out on Anna Maria looking for it, 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 if you're in Manatee County and Sarasota County and you're looking for really good Mexican food, I've got a place for you. Uh, so why share it? Because, um, it is something that the more that we share, they will continue to make more Mexican food. It's not that it's going to run out. And so Jesus's way, his truth, his life doesn't run out if um, we don't have to hoard it to ourselves. In fact, the more that we share the why of this, uh, it seems to be the, the grander it gets. Um, there are some fishing areas, fishing holes in this area that people will not share with me uh, the location. And that that's different, right? This is, um, this is the why uh, that we are supposed to uh, share. And um, can we switch to the how? Yes. Now, the how, uh, I'm going to have a lot of agreement with you on because oh. I have... <laughs> it's it's a movie. Um, I, I think the how is, is so important because human beings, you know, we don't need to be scolded. We don't need to be shamed, really, we don't need to be attacked or insulted. You know, okay. I had a very bad experience of a gentleman, maybe in his twenties, coming onto campus, and our sexton at the time is just one of the sweetest guys you're ever going to meet, but mm-hmm. he also has a lot of a thick shell around him. Sure, um, right. And um, this person just came here, and they were proselytizing at him and calling him a sinner and insulting him. And he was trying to really control himself because, you know, he's a Marine and there's no such thing as a former Marine, as you probably know. There's not. He was like 75. Mm -hmm. And he he called me and I rushed over because he did not want to hit this person. (laughs) Right. Right. And and I ended up having trying to have a conversation with him. But all he would do was quote scripture at me. He would try to insult me. Right. He was trying to prove he was smarter than me, which did not Mm. in any way create a space for conversation. And I think that most of the evangelizing that the church should be doing is not in the street. It's not walking randomly up to a person and saying, do you know Jesus? Because that just, that's not, in my opinion, that's not what's going to work. What's going to work, and maybe you can share an experience from yourself, is when one soul shares with another soul what God has done for them. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, when I talk to somebody who I know needs to hear about forgiveness, I talk to them about how God forgave me. Mm-hmm. And that's that to me is where I think the how should be. Yeah, yeah, I um, I agree that with our discussion groups, I often will play a small video clip of a comedian before we begin because our discussion groups talk about really heavy stuff. Yeah. And uh, the one I played last week was uh, from Jim Gaffigan in one of his stand ups oh, uh, routines. Him. What's that? I love him. Uh, Jim's great. Right. And so he said, um, I want everybody to feel comfortable. So let me tell you about Jesus. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that you one. just heard the whole crowd. Just, <laughs> and, then he does that, and he does that really high pitched voice. You, you better not. You yeah, that's right. And he says, if you walk up to somebody and say, can I tell you about Jesus? You're probably going to get a reaction about saying, that's okay. I could walk up to the Pope right now and say to him, uh, would you like to, I'd like to talk to you about Jesus. And the Pope would be like, whoa, man, I'm not in the office right now. Like, you know, leave, that, work, you know? I leave work. That's, yes, I leave that's work. That's what yeah. he says, yeah. Very nice. So, um, uh, yeah, the how is really, really important. And so um, there's there's a part of Islam, and if you don't mind me bringing a different no, faith no, tradition no. in, um, that um, a particular group uh, tradition within Islam uh, believes that there's uh, a lot, the evangelism for them is right living. And so that they live in a particular way, in an ordered and structured life. And that somebody will be um, called to them because of their ordered and structured life and ask questions. That to them, uh, the expression of their faith, the evangelism of their faith, is not going out and telling people what to believe, but by showing that. And um, now I didn't tell this person who had explained it to me that technically you're talking about an ancient Christian tradition. I, did, I didn't bring that up. Nope. Um, yeah, yeah, I know. But it's the idea there have been um, several points in history of where, especially when Christianity was new, when it was the way, it wasn't even called Christianity, and bad things would happen, like people from the north would come down and invade. And there were groups, pockets of people that would huddle together and pray and be at peace in whatever is going on. There were people that always seemed to have clean water to share. There are people that always seem to have food available for themselves and for others. And that was the primary expression of evangelism in the early church, was that they just looked different. They were just more at peace, more comfortable than everybody else. And people came to them and asked them, uh, what God is it that you believe in? Now, and there's a pantheon of gods. And so uh, they said, well, we believe in the one, the almighty. and so it's uh, the, the, the how to express Jesus in um, he is being our way, our truth, and our life is, uh, and I think, in this form, not in the 20th century um, beating people over the head, and certainly not in the Spanish Inquisition model. No, um, of course not. And, and what I would say is, as um, one of the classes that I teach and have been working on in terms of evangelism in our parish— is I told the story of a person who worked in kind of a city office, you mm -hmm. know, you know, bureaucratic office stuff, right? And there was one person who was just kind of always angry, always sad. There were bad things happening in their life, bad things happening in their family. And they always noticed that this one person always had a smile on their face. And so one day they just walked up and says, why do you got that stupid smile on your face all the time? And the person said, because I know Jesus. Mm. And of course, that person just, you know, kind of just walked it off and said, ah, oh, whatever, that's just a crazy thing to say. But right. months later, when that person would come back again and say, okay, no, really, why are you so happy? He says, well, you know what, let me tell you a little bit more about what I mean that I have Jesus and mm -hmm. how Jesus has me and how he's in my life. Mm -hmm. And they began to form a friendship because this person's witness began with a smile. Right, right. That's, that's very, very good. Yeah. Um, and so the other thing I want us to look at, and I'm, while you were telling me the story, I was trying to think of things that you and I can disagree on. Um, it's just no, so gonna, I may give we'll it a shot a here. We'll make a list. Right. Um, that uh, with this, we, uh, one way to do scholarship with, with scripture, one way to read scripture is to see what Jesus said. Let's see what Jesus didn't say. Yeah. Uh, Jesus didn't say, without me, you go to hell. That, that's not anywhere in this. Um, he didn't say that God is heaven, so that my way is the only way in. Um, Jesus had those words. He knew how to say them. Uh, the gospel writer that we've named John knows how to write them. And so if Jesus meant, I have a very narrow path of salvation, everybody else goes into eternal damnation and fire. This is the only and way in and through. He had those words. He could have said them. So here's where I would go with that. Mm -hmm. What is the opposite of life? Death. Right. What's the opposite of truth? Error. 
Right, air. Um, so the way that I think of it, and, and remember, I was raised um, as a, a Roman Catholic under Vatican II, so there's a lot of Nostra Aetate, you know, the interaction with other religions. And so mm. to me, it, it deals a lot more with this idea of when we encounter Jesus, we encounter true life. If we are away from Jesus, if we are away from God the Father, that is drawing us further and further from life, which is leading us towards death. So my view about things like hell, and, and I love uh, the, the images from The Great Divorce from C.S. Lewis, that's really helped my theology of, of things like hell, is that hell is something that we choose when we cannot live in relationship with God because we choose and want to be God. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, is not, it is not because I stole something. It's because I cannot acknowledge that the thing that I stole hurt somebody else and that it didn't belong to me. So when I think of this narrow path, I think of it as a path that is so narrow I can't fall off of it. Does that make any sense? Um, um, can you try it one more time with a yeah, different... So what, so. I, so what I mean by that is this. When Jesus says, this is the way, and this is one of the analogies that I, that I give. Let's say you're in an a, a, a auditorium or a movie theater, right? And there's a line, there's, there's a sign that's labeled exit. In case of an emergency, you're going to the one that's labeled exit. If there's another sign that's labeled something else, that's probably not going to lead outside. Jesus says, here is the entrance. This is the door through which you go. If you go through another one, you're not going to get this wonderful thing that I have told you, you will receive. You're not going to receive the fullness of it. And so the door may seem very narrow, but Jesus has used this analogy before when he talks about, you know, go through the narrow gate, yes, or, you know, right. all these other things. The, the reason that it feels narrow is because we're so big and we have to let some things go from us. We have to, you know, leave behind the, the sin. We have to leave behind our ego and the things that we think God should be doing and go through the narrow door. So I think this is coming back to our discussion about hitting people over the head because I haven't met a person yet that likes to be told that they're wrong or that they have to do something. You know, I haven't met a person yet that likes that. Right, right. You know, I have met some people that um, that prefer to go on to Janie Craig than Weight Watchers, where they like to be told what to eat instead of giving recipes and make all sorts of different things. Uh, I have no idea what that has to do with John 14. So I'm, I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> and, uh, and for those listening, folks, we've already hit the 23 minute mark, which means, you know, we're about to start getting a little punchy. Um, but uh, the, the fun part for me is if you know me, you know my father also. And from now on, you do know him and you have seen him. Right. Uh, that Jesus is the embodiment of, um, of how we, in this earthly form, can get to know, connect, get to know God. Uh, there is one thing I need to say, though, uh, and that is for those in liturgical traditions that will hear this passage on Sunday, um, you will hear this last line. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. Oh, yeah. Um, the, um, the, the Greek in John is very simple. And if it sounds um, a lot like, uh, you know, Spot runs down the street, Peter chased Spot down the street. It's because it is just uh, John's, uh, well, Greek is not his first language. It is Greek as a second language. It's a GSL. It's what he's writing in. And so feel free to use GSL anytime you want, Alex. I think that's instead of ESL, right? Um, so if in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it, is a very straightforward, um, easy for us to translate from Greek into English. Um, the thing is, uh, raise your hand if you've ever asked for G Jesus for something and you didn't get it, right? I mean, it's, um, we, we, all, <laughs> we all have this experience. And it's interesting that it's linked with uh, no one comes to the Father except through me. Right. Okay. <laughs> so if, if I asked for Jesus for a brand new bike and I didn't get one, um, does that then throw off the apple cart? Um, so it's, I, I, I want to address it again here at the end of this particular pod. Maybe we should do a separate podcast on this all by itself. Maybe um, that might be good. But yeah. Um, 
just know that in the line before that, Jesus says, um, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son, I will do whatever you ask in my name. Um, if these things glorify God, they will be done. And so uh, just know that we can take sentences out of context or say, um, uh, what's that old song, Dear Lord, well, you get me a Mercedes Benz. Um, you know, that it's, <laughs> um, that that's, if that glorifies God, sure. Um, so the sense of um, glory with God and what we ask, that we ask within. And so in, in the 21st century in Christianity, we say whatever fits within God's will. So what we ask for Jesus within God's will, um, he gives to us. And so um, so just know that those things are, are tied in together. Uh, but last but not least, um, I want us to focus, I, I would like the church for us to focus on the first sentence as much as we focus on that last sentence about I am the way, the truth, and life. Yeah. The first sentence, do not let your hearts be troubled, as in have peace, believe in God, believe also in me. Well, I think, that's, my, why, I think that's why we have that as that funeral reading. Exactly. In my father's mesa, there are many haciendas, um, that there are many places built within God's kingdom. Um, do not let your hearts be troubled. So if, if we can focus on that, and maybe that is the why and the how, um, that the more that those of us who uh, attempt to follow Jesus with our lives show that our hearts are not troubled in a world that feels like it's spinning off of its axis and feels like that it's spinning further and further off axis, if that's not letting our hearts be troubled because in God's house there are many houses, um, then, then that is a good why and how of how to share this. Yeah, I don't think I can add anything to that one. That's good. Well, nice. Uh, next week, should we talk, tackle should? Should we? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, should we tackle should? Why not? I think we should, and I think maybe we shall. Get the shoulds out. Exactly. Right. <laughs> well, thanks everyone for uh, for putting up with this episode. Um, if there's things that you want to see us talk about and possibly disagree about, leave it in the comment section on YouTube. And we are now officially on Spotify. Yay, Spotify! So we're working to get the podcast out to several of the, the online networks that you can find. And as soon as we do that, we'll keep letting you know. Yes. And um, as some would say, you have a face for radio. So it's uh, it's nice to be on Spotify that um, I don't have to worry about combing my hair or anything. And yeah. <laughs> nor do you, Alex. I don't know. All right. Thanks, well, uh, thank you. And um, it's been an enjoyable half an hour to spend with you again. So. All right. You too. And we will catch you in the next one. All right. Bye.